Once you reach a point where you are comfortable with the build process, you probably will begin to build more complex scenes and shows than what we have been working on so far. This can lead to an increase in your rendering times. So today, let's take a look at some techniques we can use to reduce those render times by pre-rendering our assets in DaVinci Resolve. Starting off on the edit page, we have our second completed scene for this tutorial. Before rendering, let's trim off the excess at the end of the timeline, move the playhead to the end of the audio track. Then, while holding the shift key, hit your right arrow key three to five times to leave a three to five second overrun on the scene. Use the Ctrl plus B keyboard shortcut to place a cut at the location of the playhead. As long as the auto track selector is enabled for each track, you will place a cut in all of your layers. Next, while holding down the Alt key on your keyboard, hit the letter Y. This will automatically select everything to the right of the playhead, without you having to click and drag over the tracks. Now we can hit the Delete key to remove the leftover parts quite easily. Let's take a look at rendering now and what we can do to improve the render times. Here, I've rendered this scene as it is now, to act as a control for this experiment. The total render time was 1 minute and 33 seconds. This honestly is a really good render time, but I do have a pretty decent computer. Your mileage may vary of course depending on your machine specs. That said, this isn't a bad render time at all. And honestly, I would be very happy with this and not even bother with the techniques we are about to cover but this is a great time to demonstrate them in the event that you absolutely need them down the road. Let's begin by looking at doing some pre-rendering of the static images we have. Let's open the base layer up in the Fusion page and navigate over to our garage door background. The background behind the coffin is comprised of several images put together with color correction applied, but we can actually make this one complete image if we want. Let's change the color of this anchor background node and make it completely transparent. Now, right-click in the preview pane for the combined images, and choose, Save Image. Name this image anything you want, as long as it's descriptive of what it is. Then for the format, make sure you choose, PNG. PNG files will retain any transparency within them. This way, the images can still be layered on top of other assets without a black background interfering. Now we just need to import this saved image, into our scene 2 images bin within the media pool by dragging it into the bin or dropping it directly on the nodes pane with the bin selected. If we put the pre-rendered image side by side with the base it was taken from, we see there is no difference between the two. Let's disconnect the two branches and plug in our new combined image. Notice that when I go back to the full preview of the scene, there is no difference to the look when using the new image. If we desired, we could delete the original nodes entirely. However, I prefer to leave them in place in case I need to correct them down the line and generate a new combined image. While this seems small, it just depends on what you are trying to build. In this example from my Haunted Mansion show, I used a Blender model of the Haunted Mansion exterior in Resolve's 3D space and did some lighting on it to bring out the features. This is a resource-intensive task, but ultimately the asset isn't moving or doing anything so it only needs to become an image. The exported image is far less intensive for rendering and even allowed for a color change with minimal overhead. Pre-rendering combined assets into images may or may not have an impact in your rendering. It just depends on how much you are doing with a particular branch. In addition to individual branches, we can pre-render the entire background with all of our transform and perspective filter changes. Since we have a few video assets attached to our fusion tree, Let's move them to another layer entirely to make this easy. Select all of the nodes that make up the branch and cut them using the Ctrl plus X keyboard shortcut. We can navigate to another layer far quicker than returning to the edit page by opening up this clips menu. The clips menu matches all of our layers on the edit page. So if we wanted to move the video to the top layer, we just have to select the clip all the way to the right in the menu. Make room on the tree limb if needed, since these assets are meant to be in the background behind the media we previously included here. Paste the cut assets onto the nodes pane, using the Ctrl plus V keyboard shortcut. Then, link the limb back together. The wall candlesticks are still in the correct position, so we are good to go here. Let's do the same thing with the coffin video, only this time we can put this anywhere on the left house limb that we want, since nothing is really going to cover it up. This leaves us with a background comprised only of images now. Just like with the window pane background, 
we can save the image as a PNG file by using the output node preview and selecting Save Image from the preview pane. Import the image, and you can either add it to the whole house layer and turn off all the merge nodes along the trunk, or you can add a final merge at the top of the trunk and connect the combined background image to that. Either way will work, and neither way is better than the other. Whichever way you do it, be sure to disable the merge nodes along the trunk of your fusion tree. The only one you will want to remain enabled will be the merge node that is connecting the pre-rendered image. Back on the edit page, everything is still running smoothly. In fact, we can use the same technique we just used to make a pre-rendered image for our trim layers. One advantage for using the pre-rendered images on your layers is that you can replace the entire track with just the image if you desire. Be aware that this will remove your entire fusion tree for that layer, making it difficult to make changes if you need to. If you're going to do that, you must be absolutely sure you don't want to make any major changes to the layer. For that reason, I prefer to keep my fusion trees intact and just add the image to the trunk like we did with our base layer in the background. The one case I can make for using a pre-rendered image is when it comes to the blackout layer. Here, you can see I've replaced the top blackout layer for my template with a pre-rendered PNG image. I rarely make a change to that blackout layer, so using it here presents no issue. In fact, if you pre-render your blackout layer and save it as a PNG image and import it as part of your template, you can hold off on that layer entirely until you are ready to render your entire show. Then you just need to add the image as a second layer and cover all of your previously rendered scenes. Now that we've covered images, let's move on to pre-rendering some of the video effects we intend to use. For this demonstration, we have our main hero element that we can pre-render to include all of the effects that we are applying to it through the Fusion branch. Let's ignore this transform node, because its sole purpose is sizing and animating the movement of this video, which we might want to make changes to. Instead, let's focus on selecting and copying each of the nodes along this branch that are modifying the video. Now, reopen the workbench that we created earlier and drag and drop the original video onto it. Open this in Fusion and then paste the nodes we copied onto the nodes pane. There is no need to recreate a Fusion tree here. Just connect the media into the bottom node, and then the top node to the media out. Now, open the delivery page. Name this whatever you like, but we will change some of the render settings. To render this with transparency, change the format to QuickTime. The codec to go Pro Cineform. And the type to RGB 16-bit. Finally ensure that Export Alpha is checked. We won't really need the audio, so on the Audio tab, you can uncheck the Export Audio box if you desire. Advanced settings don't matter too much here, so we can leave those be. Then choose Add to Render Queue, and render out the video. This would also be a good time to save this as a preset, which I originally forgot to screen capture and circle back to later. Just like our previous preset, select these three dots, and choose Save as new preset. Name this whatever you like, as long as it's descriptive of what the render result will be. Now in the future, you can reuse this preset whenever you like. Let's import the newly rendered video into our Scene 2 video bin. And then open our Scene 2 top layer in the Fusion page. Find the branch containing our Boo Crew ghosts. Detach them from the Transform node. And then replace it with our newly pre-rendered version. Everything still looks the same, so we are definitely on track. Again, your mileage may vary when pre-rendering videos. In this tutorial scene, it doesn't make that much of a difference. However, this scene from my Fantasmic show, featuring King Louie on a float, is actually a prime candidate for it. Here, multiple videos and images are being combined to create the float. Together, these nodes really drag down the rendering time for the scene especially since it is also featured with several other floats. Combining and pre-rendering all of the nodes that make up this float, with the exception of the transform node that controls its movement, will give a boost to the performance of this scene. Our final trick for today involves pre-rendering an entire layer. This is something you would choose to do only if you are sure you are done with a particular layer for your scene, and wanted to make no further changes. Right-click on the video track you want to pre-render, and choose Render in place. We want to ensure we keep the alpha settings of everything other than the base layer. 
So, let's set the format to QuickTime. The codec to GoPro Cineform. And the type to RGB 16-bit. The render a source resolution checkbox is not required for this. It doesn't make a difference for our specific usage. You don't have to check it, and if you do it probably won't harm anything. Once you select render, you will be prompted to provide a file path of where to store this video. You will not get the option to name it something unique. Resolve is going to name it what it wants to. This could take some time to render depending on how many assets you have included in that layer. When it completes, you'll find the pre-rendered layer video in your media pool, and if you have the correct bin selected already, it will be right where it should be. Again, the scene still looks exactly the same, and the pre-rendered layer behaves just like a normal video that was exported with the alpha channel. Personally, my window layers are the ones that I'm most likely to completely pre-render once I have the look I want for them set up. Should you decide that you need to make a change to any of these pre-rendered layers, just right-click on the video track and choose Decompose to Original. This will bring back your original map file and fusion tree for further modification. This will not work if you use the video output for the pre-rendered layer from your media pool. If you overwrite the layer with that version, you will lose the ability to return it to the original. With all of those techniques applied to the scene, let's generate a new render and see if we made a difference. Now that the render is completed, we can see it took only 16 seconds, saving us over a minute of render time. But keep in mind, pre-rendering this top layer probably took about a minute on its own. Essentially what we have done, is we've taken the render time hit up front on different assets and layers, in order to reduce the final render time for our completed scene. We've also traded out compute power for available disk space. By that I mean, your computer won't have to work as hard to complete the render, but you will lose drive space in exchange. So in the end with a scene like this, I don't know that all of that work is really worth it, but for bigger and more complex projects, you will probably want to use these techniques to reduce your final render times. Each of these have been critical when building the larger shows I've done in the past few years, and now I've passed them on to you. Believe it or not, we only have a few videos left in this series. I certainly hope they end up shorter than this one did. In the meantime, stay subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on any future tutorials.